Welcome to the Willoughby East Lakes Public Library's presentation of Tammy's Rose Gardening Series. My name is Tammy and welcome to my rose garden. The tools that you will need are Irish Spring Soap to help prevent animal damage, insecticidal soap to kill and control insect pests, fungicidal spray to help kill and control fungal diseases, and some come with a miticide in them too, and a Japanese beetle trap to help trap Japanese beetles. These you can find at your neighborhood hardware store or other places like Home Depot and Lowe's. You need to make sure that you follow the directions on the bottle when you apply the fungicides and the insecticidal soaps and many times you'll find that a lot of times these products don't always work the way you expect them to and what really works the best is having good garden hygiene with picking up all your debris and basically doing preventive maintenance. Animal damage can be seen from usually parts of the stems or the leaves will be gnawed down on or chewed or broken off and there's several different types of animals that can do damage to your roses. Um, one of the most common ones are the deer. And usually one of the ways that you can help 
prevent the problem is to either put like Irish Spring soap around or you can sometimes spray other types of like animal urine around or you can hang a bar of soap from like a tree and that usually helps limit the damage if you don't have like a high enough fence to keep the animals out and away from the plants. Some other people have found that they use like animal fur or like dog hair they'll put around too to um, again scare off the animals. But you know there's different tricks that you can try to use but sometimes it's a no-win situation depending upon what type of animal that you're dealing with. Rose rosette caused by a mite, witch broom appearance, large increase in thorns, red shoots, and small leaves, brittle and deformed. No real treatment. Plant must be destroyed and put in a bag or burned so that you don't spread mites around the yard. You can still plant a new rose in the same area since the mites don't overwinter in the soil. Crown gall. Bacteria causes gall growths to grow, usually near the soil level or the crown, but can be in other places on the plant. No real treatment. Must remove plant and destroy it. Don't plant anything in the soil for two years. Aphids, little green, yellow, red, or black pests, feed on young shoots and cause it to be distorted or weak. Treatment is strong spray of water to knock them off. Insecticide or insecticidal soap can also be used. 
Also, natural predators will eat them too. Black spot is a fungal disease and water splashing on the leaves spreads it. Also wet and cold nights prevent the moisture from evaporating from the leaves. Treatment involves a teaspoon of baking soda and a quart of warm water sprayed on the leaves. Also, picking up the fallen leaves and the debris so that they don't keep spreading the disease. Rust, it's a fungal disease and orange rust marks cause infected leaves to fall off. Treatment involves removing the fallen leaves to minimize the spread and you can use chemical fungicides also to try to control it. Cane borer, wasps burrows into the end of the cane and tunnels through the stem, leaves a hole at the end and then the leaves turn yellow and the cane dies back. The treatment involves dabbing Elmer's glue on the end of the cane after pruning it to seal the end and you can spray them off with a hose beforehand to try to control the aphid population since that's part of what the cane Borers eat. Mosaic is caused by a virus. Bright yellow patterns made up of wavy lines. No treatment is available and you must remove the plant and destroy it to prevent the virus from spreading to other plants in the garden. Botrius blight is a fungal disease it is caused by hot and humid conditions. Dry weather does not 
cause it to happen. It helps to limit midsummer feeding so that you don't have any new little growths coming out to minimize it. And that's part of what helps as far as the treatment for it. Powdery mildew. It is a fungal disease that thrives in humid conditions and in dry conditions. You need to clean up all the shed leaves in the fall, especially, to prevent the reoccurrence of it in the next season. Treatment entails spraying it with a fungicide to help control the disease. Leaf cutter bees, they are insects that cut round holes near the edges of the leaves and they use this material to make parts of their hives with it. and there is no treatment for it. Spider mites, they are red, black, or brown insects, or better known as mites. You can find them on the underside of the leaf and they suck the sap and they leave fine webs and that's how you can tell that you have them as you can see the webs even though it's hard to see the mite. They re reproduce rapidly and they flourish in crowded gardens. The treatment entails high water blasts from the hose every couple of days from under the leaf and that helps to control them. You can also use insecticidal soap and miticides. Thrips, small brown insects that feed on the inside of the flowers. They are attracted to yellow or light colored roses and come out during the summer when it's warm. Treatment entails using orthene, malathon, or insecticidal soap, but these usually don't work
Japanese beetles. The beetles are hard shelled green, black, and gold in insects. They attack the flowers, buds, and foliage. Treatment involves hand picking them off, using a trap, but if you use a trap, you need to put it away from the roses so that it doesn't attract more of the beetles to the rose and you end up with more beetles. Leaf hoppers. These are white, yellow, or green wedge-shaped pests which are a quarter to a half inch long. They hop or fly from plant to plant. The female deposits eggs in the bark of the cane in the fall. And you can tell this by these purple and pimple-like spots on the cane, which that shows that the eggs are there. In the spring, the young nymphs emerge from the cane and leave wounds in the bark. Stem canker fungus can occur, and they feed on the underside of the leaves and cause white dots on the top of the leaf. Treatment involves insecticidal spray on the lower leaf surfaces, acephate, malathion, or permethrin, granular application to the top of the soil of dinotiferin will also help suppress the leafhopper population. Earwigs, small brown insects with forceps, pincers, and antennas. These are nocturnal and they hide on the inside of the petals of the flowers where they eat aphids and sometimes some of the plant material. They also feed on the decaying material on the ground. Treatment involves using natural predators, which are birds, bats, lizards, spiders. They will eat the earwigs. Or you can also use your fingers and you can smash, smush them. Sawflies are also called rose slugs, are small green pests similar to a caterpillar, but are closely related to bees, wasps, and the larvae feed on the underside of the leaves 
and they create almost like a window pane like damage. And it's almost like they strip off the top part, you know, the just the layer of the leaf as they eat it. The treatment involves hand picking and disposing of the infested leaves using insecticidal soap and horticultural oils and these two you can also hand pick off and you can also smush these two with your with your fingers and Rose canker. Canes turn black where recently pruned. And you can also see other little cracks or holes developing in the cane. It happens more in the colder weather. The treatment involves adequate fertilizer, clean, using clean, sharp pruners, and mulching the roots so that you keep the plant strong. Good bugs, these are bugs that actually help you out in your garden. These include hoverflies, which are black and yellow, and they mimic bees and wasps, and they eat aphids and thrips. Ladybugs, they eat aphids and spider mites. Predatory mites, parasitic wasps, and midges. These all eat aphids. Thank you for joining us for this presentation of Willoughby Eastlake Libra Public Library's Tammy's Rose Gardening Series. Join us again next time. We hope to see you then. You can find more programs like this on our YouTube channel, WE Library or on our library's website, we247.org.